Hello everyone, welcome back to Quick's Ideas. I'm Walter and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you about displaying content in Wix Studio. So in essence, we are going to be talking about Content Management System or CMS. So I'm sure you've come across CMS or databases and how you can work with them on your website, use them to display content or simply collect information and store them in a database and that is exactly what we're going to be doing here in this tutorial and we're going to be implementing this feature in Wix Studio. Now just before we get into that I want to share with you a simple demonstration of what CMS can help you do. Now this is my website Wix Ideas which you can totally come and check out and over here in this tutorials page I've listed all the tutorials that I share on YouTube and I've displayed them in a repeater or in card forms. Now as you can see each of these are different content with the same layout and when you click on this particular item here it takes you to a page that contains more information about this content now as you can see we're on a different page that contains more information about this particular item and if you scroll all the way down you can see we have more and more information about this item now what this does is it allows me to add this content to my database and then to display them to my site users in the front end in any format that i want so basically i can design this page as much as i want to and in any format i want it to be like now as you can see we are able to also display things like the date it was uploaded or how long it takes for you to read through the content or simply to share these items on social media and also here you can see that you can add or save this particular item to your account so that you can revisit it at any time that you want now another important thing over here on this page is that i'm actually able to add a search bar that allows me to search through these items now as you can see the moment i begin to search through an item it filters through my repeater and shows me exactly what I want to search for. Now you can go ahead and clear all of these and it even shows you how many items are currently being displayed. Now as you scroll down, you can see that we have only a few that show up at a time. And when you click on load more, it shows up even more items for you. Now the fun part about this is that you can be flexible with the filter. So you can click on this to actually expand and you can see we're able to filter through particular categories from Arturia repeater. Now you can search through any item or filter through any item that you want and you can also sort them by the most recent or the oldest. Now this is what you can achieve with a content management system and this is just one part of what a content management system. Now the other part is you have a form that allows you to collect content from your site users and save them into a database. And so in this tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you everything that you need to know about the content management system in Wix Studio. Now bear in mind that this feature also works exactly the same way in Wix Classic site. So you can go ahead and continue watching this video if you want to also implement this feature in your Wix website. Now just before we jump right into this tutorial, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Turn on your bell notification to be the very first to know of my future videos like this and don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up if you think this feature is going to be useful for you. Now without wasting any more time, let's jump right in. Alright, so the very first thing we want to understand is what CMS actually is, so content management system. So a content management system is a software platform that enables users to create, manage, and publish digital content, typically for websites without requiring extensive technical knowledge. So in short, we can just call it a tool for creating, managing, and publishing digital content on websites. Exactly what we have over here, where we have content that we are actually displaying to our site users. And we can even in fact manage this content by deleting or actually improving the content that we already have. Now let's head to the very first part, which is adding a content management system to your Wix Studio. Now on your left side, you can see we have a panel and over here you can see the CMS icon. Now click on this to actually add it to your site. If you've never added this to your website, then this is the view you're going to get. But if you already added it, then you can skip to the next part where you're going to see how it looks like when you already have a content management system already applied to your site. Now let's go ahead and click on add to site. Now when you add a content management system to your site, you're greeted with this view and over here on the main tab, you can see that we have two options 
either you start with your preset or you start by adding content to your site now these are two options if you want to go ahead and start out with a Wix preset or you know content from Wix. for example you want to have a team you want to have a project you want to have a news a portfolio then they're going to help you to create a collection that contains all these items already in them now let's go ahead and try this out by clicking on add to site for the team now when you click on add to site it creates pages and it also creates a collection for you now we're going to check out this in a second now this is a collection for the team that is a preset that wix already created and this is going to give us an idea of what this collection actually does now over here we have fields which we have here name email job title long description phone photo short description and so on now we can also see from here that we have some sections that are not the same as what we have here and these sections cannot be edited because these are based off of urls from the pages that were created automatically now we're going to get to that section pretty soon so let's go ahead and just skip this section for now so on the bright side this is what a collection looks like and a collection is just a set of related content items organized in table formats within a database so ideally this is what a collection is and a database is just everything that encompasses all the collections so let's just go ahead and close this right up now as you can see over here we are greeted by a page under the team pages or dynamic page and we are under this page called the team or list page which is a page that displays all the items in a repeater format now this is a very beautiful way for you to showcase all the items in your collection to your site users in the front end so as you can see over here we have information like their images their names their job title and the paragraphs now all of these are connected to the database using a data set now we're going to arrive to those sections pretty soon but first of all i'm going to head back to the cms and here we're going to create our own collection we're going to go ahead and customize it the way we want it to look like and there are two places that you can actually create first of all you can head over to the main and over here you can create a collection or you can head over to your collection and create a collection using this button now i prefer to do it from here because i can have an overview of all the collections that i have now go ahead and create a collection and here we are greeted by two options the very first one is creating by ai and the next one is to start from scratch now this is entirely up to you but i would suggest that you start from scratch but in this tutorial we are exploring all the options the things that you need to know about the content management system so here we're going to go ahead and start with creating with ai i'm going to share with you how you can create a collection using an ai now click on create with ai and click on next and over here you're going to give your collection a name now i'm going to make this super simple and just call this real estate now over here you can see that we have a text of what a description should look like and i'm going to go ahead and actually add something similar all right so over here you can see that we have a short description of detail about our collection and here it talks about the larger properties in new york with price description size pets allowed and images and if you hover over this icon here you can see that we says be as specific as you can this will help the ai generate relevant fields and sample content now you can go ahead and add as much as 1000 characters of details now let's click on next now when you click on next the ai begins to generate your collection fields and as you can see that generated the price description size space allowed and images now over here you can say that if you want it to generate sample content or you don't want sample content now for me i think i want to have sample content for the sake of this tutorial now go ahead and click on create collection and when you click on that the ai begins to create your collection and this is going to populate your collection with sample content now over here you can see that we have everything that we've asked the ai to do now i think this is an intuitive and beautiful way for you to populate your collection with ai so here we have the price we have the description we have the size we have the pet allowed which is a boolean field and we have the image now we're going to be checking out all of these when we actually begin to create our custom collection from scratch now that is where the most details is going to come in but here's an overview of what you can do with your collection now just before we actually add a start from scratch let's head over to this hamburger menu and click on cms and over here we have arrived at our content manager where we have all our collections that we've created so far in this tutorial now from here you can go ahead and click on any of the collections that you want to open or modify and let's head back and also here you can click on the real estate and you can see we have five items and when you head back you can see that we have the total number of items that are in each of these collections now over here you can also click on this icon here to open the collection which when you click on that it opens the collection 
and you can also go ahead and open the collection settings now the collection settings is where you can do everything such as renaming it and also changing if you want the item to be visible now when you toggle this on it's going to add a new field to your collection and the field is going to be responsible for displaying the item in the front end which we're going to check this out pretty soon and over here you can see that we have a default status so all new items that you add should either be hidden or visible and i would suggest you make them visible and the next option we have is to hide the table layout now we're going to leave this unchecked and we're going to come back to this later on and let's go ahead and save and take a look at this particular collection to see what we've added now this is the status of our items now collection and this is the new field for when you decide to make it visible or when you decide to make it hidden when you click on that you have three options the first option is to make this item hidden on your front end and the next item is to make it visible or you can schedule when this should be visible or when this should be hidden all right and here you can also see that we have other fields that were automatically added such as visible on site what time it was visible on site or what time it was hidden from site now let's go ahead and close this right up and here we're going to get started with creating our collection from scratch now let's head back to our cms and over here at your collection let's go ahead and click on create collection and go ahead and select the start from scratch we're going to go ahead and click on next and here we're going to give our collection a name now the name of your collection is entirely up to you but the nomenclature of your collection should always be based up on what the collection is about or what content you're going to be placing in them now for example this collection is going to be a fashion collection i'm going to be adding clothes and fashion wear i'm going to go ahead and name these as fashion now you can call these anything that you want you can rename it at any time that you want so just go ahead and give it a name that you are happy with and the next option we are greeted with is how many items do you want in your collection now there are two options that we have here one is having multiple items which is what we've been having earlier where we have up to five items in our collection and we can have up to 100 items in our collection and many more and the next one is having just a single item in our collection and this is where we manage content for static pages and sections like a home page or a promotional banner now if you want to display particular text on your page and you don't want to always go into your editor to edit it at all times then you can create a collection separately for that text that you can always come back to from the back end and change at any time you want now we're going to go ahead and stick with the multiple items and then click on create now when you click on create it's going to create you a brand new collection that looks this way now you can notice the difference that there is nothing here only a title field that we can actually remove or leave it as it is now as you can see there is no items or no content yet and we're about to start adding our content and just before we do that we're going to take a look at what this interface is about now the very first thing we're going to take a look at is this hamburger menu over here that allows us to head back to the cms menu where we can see all our collections and also we can see the name of our collection and here we have the view of this particular collection and the default view has no item now this is where you can actually choose more views that you want and we're going to check this out later when we have content and more fields and over here to the right you can see we have a button here which says more actions and here we have the import item so here we're able to import a csv file and we're also able to export this collection or content from this collection out of this website now if you already have more content we're able to see all the roles and all the fields that we have and if you can choose to export the entire collection or you can choose to export the filter data or you can choose to export the collection fields only and this is when you want to actually import new items you can export the fields and then fill up the csv file and then re-import it to your website and then next we're going to check out the collection settings which is something that we already saw from earlier now here again you can rename your collection to anything that you want to and over here you can also change the visibility if you want to choose what to display on your website i'm going to go ahead and toggle this on because i want to be able to control what is visible and what is not visible on my website and here we also have an option for hiding the table layout which is what we already have here so you can choose to hide the table layout and then click on save now when you click on save it's going to change the layout of your field now you can see this has become a list type and there is no table layout anymore all right so that is what it is i'm going to have a proper look of how this looks like later on when we have more content in it 
but let's go ahead and change that back to a table layout because that is a better view for this particular tutorial now let's go ahead and click on save and that is going to bring back the table layout that we had from earlier and over here you can see that from the default view we have the table option displaying again and we're back to our table layout all right so so far we're going to head over to the permissions and privacy and the permissions is what you choose on how you want to display this content to your site visitors if you want them to add content to it or you want them to delete or you want them to update content from it now by default anyone can see the content from this collection that means when we display this content on a repeater anyone can see that and when we have a form and we want to allow site visitors to add content to this collection then we can see from here that only admin can do that so when a site visitor attempts to submit a form to this collection it there's going to be an error and also if you give an option to allow the site users to delete the items then as you can see from here that is not going to be possible because only the admin can delete that but then you can also change all of this you can decide to say only site members who added the items to the collection can delete or anyone who is signed into the website can actually delete or anyone at all any site visitor can delete and also here who can update content here you can also choose who can update it if it's just going to be the admin it's just going to be site member who added it or a site member who is logged in or anyone at all who visits your website then this is where you control it now here you can choose to actually add different types of permissions to it for example if you're going to have a form on your website you can select the form and as you can see from here only the admin can view this but anyone can add and here only the admin can delete and only the admin can update we can also go ahead and change any of these if you want it to be flexible and there are more and more options that you can actually do here and if you want this to be completely private you can go ahead and just make it private so that only the admin can see only the admin can do everything delete or update and so on so i'm going to leave this at public and go ahead and click on save now most importantly before i head back you can see that we're able to toggle between the collection settings and also the permission field so let's go ahead and click on save and move on to the next option now here we have indexes and this is an additional option that we use to filter items from the front end so we're not going to be talking much about this because we're not going to be using any code on these at all this is just going to be completely codeless tutorial so we're going to head back to our collection and we're going to head over to the actions again and as you can see we're able to add a dynamic page and what is a dynamic page a dynamic page is a page with the same design but with different content and the content changes based on the url that's simply what a dynamic page is and we're going to be having a practical understanding of what this does and the next also here we have edit on mobile if you have the wix owner app you're actually able to edit your collection from your phone and if you don't have the wix owner app yet you can scan this qr to download the app into your phone and you can edit this collection directly from your phone now next we're going to head over to the other one which is submit feedback now this is entirely up to you if you want to let wix know about an update or change that you want then you can go ahead and do that and here we are back to the collection of the table and here we're about to start adding in our fields and let's click here on add field and when you click on add field it gives you different field types it gives you the text type a rich text type a rich content a url number tags boolean reference multi-reference image media and so many more and here we have the javascript to develop code where you can actually go ahead and add in objects or array type of fields now you can play around with these fields but we're going to only be sticking with a few of them here because of time and you can go ahead and play with any type of field that you want to have now the field that i want to add for my fashion as you can see we already have a title field the other field i need to add is an image so go ahead and click on image and choose field type now here you can see that we can rename this field by calling it image or we can call it product image and once you're done you can go ahead and click on save or you can go over here and actually add a text and say this is the product image now you're going to see how this displays later on if you have a field that is complicated to understand you can leave a note there so that you can help your site collaborators to understand what the field does or any information that you want them to know about the field so let's go ahead and click on save and when you do that it adds a new field to your collection and over here there is an icon that contains the help text that you just added about this field 
and then we can go ahead and add another field again which is the media gallery so i want to also add a gallery containing many more images or videos for that particular product so click on media gallery choose field type and here we can leave these as media gallery or simply just change that to gallery or we can call that the product gallery and if you want to add a help text you can go ahead and add that i'm going to skip that for this part and click on save all right now as you can see we have the product gallery and each of these fields have different icons to represent what they actually are now we are also going to add another field so let's go ahead and add a field and this field is going to be a rich content field and this field is a very very intuitive field and we're going to see that pretty soon so let's go ahead and choose this field type I'm going to add this as description. Now, this is a field that allows us to add media and many, many more to our content that is placed on the front end. And let's go ahead and click on save. And last, we're going to add a price field. So let's go ahead and add a price field. So go to add field. And here we're going to click on a text field for our price. And here we're going to choose the field type and click on price. Now, once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and click on save. And as you can see, we have another option that says encrypt this field content as personally identifiable information like PII. So this option is for when you want to protect your personal information like your passport and so on. So over here, you can go ahead and read through to learn more about what level of protection you can actually get from this, especially if you're collecting user information like the social security or your passport information. So let's go ahead and click on save and that brings us to the final part of the fields that we need to add for this tutorial and the next thing we want to check out here is how we can manage fields so when you click on manage fields it shows you all the fields that we have and even the ones that were hidden so over here we have the title which is what we have over here and then next we have the id now the id is for each of the items that we add and that is automatically added by wix so when you toggle that on it shows you the id which is right, right over here and you can also toggle that off and as you can see from over here we have some tags over these particular fields this is the primary field and it's primary because we have this particular flag here and you can change what field you want to be primary and over here we have system and systems are fields that are updated or created automatically by Wix right so anyone at the system is created by Wix and those are hidden and the ones that we've added are the ones without any tags on them now you can again you can toggle this on and off to actually show them or hide them from your field now if you want to hide the title field you can go ahead and hide that if you want to hide the product image you can go ahead and hide that as well and so on now i'm going to leave this checked and as you can see the only one we cannot change is the status because that is a system field that doesn't need to be hidden because we have changed that from the settings for this particular collection and also you can add a field from here when you manage your field now let's go ahead and close this and then we have options like sort and filter and this is when you actually sort and filter through your collection and we cannot really do that now because we don't have any item so let's go ahead and add an item so click on add item and as you can see by default the, this item will be visible in our front end and i'm going to go ahead and add a title for this particular product so here i'm going to call this a vintage leather jacket and i'm going to copy this name and i'm going to go over to the image now to add a product image and when i click on that image you can head over to media from wix and i'm going to paste in that particular title that i just had and here you can see many images that you can use for your products image now you can scroll through and just find any one that you really really like so i'm just going to stick with something very very simple which is the very first um, image here so go ahead and click on add to item and as you can see that image has been added and you can go ahead and replace that and when you click on more action you can replace the image or you can replace with a url so if this image is not hosted on wix you can go ahead and replace with a url and you can also preview this image to see how it looks like and if you are happy with the display now you can also go ahead and do other things like download the image or delete the image and let's go ahead and add the product gallery now click on that to add a media and as you can see we have different options that we can add such as images and videos now right here we're going to go ahead and click on add media and we're going to head to the media from wix now go ahead and paste in your title and here you're going to choose all the images that matches what you're looking for so scroll the way down i'm going to go ahead and click on this and while holding your control on windows or your command on mac go ahead and select multiple images so i'm just going to scroll all the way down until i find something that matches what i'm looking for and i think this is a very good image so once you're done selecting all your images 
go ahead and click on add to item and as you can see we have all the images that we selected and also you can head back and click on media from wix and over here you can filter by images and add images to your media now it seems like we don't have much of options here but i think we have somebody with a, a jacket here so i think this would do for now or well, you can go ahead and choose a specific video that matches what you're looking for but here i'm going to choose this video and i'm going to go ahead and add to item and over here you can see that we've added images and videos to our item now go ahead and save this and this is going to apply to your item and the next part is the description which is the rich content field now this is what that allows us to do it allows us to generate with ai it allows us to format our texts it allows us to do all of these things that we would normally do on a normal text editor and we can also have more options such as the line spacing and so on and over here you can see we can add images videos we can add gallery we can add divider we can add a table we can upload files we can insert html code we can insert or add instagram post we can insert our twitter post tiktok and if you have a shop or a Wix store embedded on your in your website, then you can add your product to this particular element. And you can also add or embed a booking, a Wix booking. If you have a Wix booking, you can add that. And if you have Wix event, you can also embed a Wix event to this particular item. You can add emojis, gifs, even add code snippets, and you can add expandable list and even add a button. Now this element is being improved on all the time. So there are so many flexibilities and things that you can do with it. Now, because I actually do not want to write so many things here, I can go ahead and click on this icon here to use AI to create content for this particular item. Now over here, I'm just going to simply tell you what to do. And here I'm going to say that write a description for a vintage leather jacket product. And once you're done, go ahead and click on this to generate your content. And here you can add the content once it's done generating so as you can see we have our ai generated content and here you can go ahead and insert this to your rich content or you can go ahead and rephrase or you can click on this to copy to clipboard discard this rephrase it shorten expand or change the tone of voice for this particular text that is just generated but let's just go ahead and insert this to our rich content and as you can see from here the rich content already has some text and what I want to do is to actually add in some tweaks to it, such as adding images. So click on this plus sign to add an image. And here I'm just going to go ahead and paste in the title again. And I'm going to look for an image that matches what I want to add to the rich content. Now you can go ahead and scroll through. Let's go ahead and add this image. We can repeat the images because of our time. But here you can see we're able to add images to our rich content. Now you can also go ahead and add in titles to it. So let's just go ahead and say benefits. And then you can go ahead and highlight this section. And when you highlight that, you can go ahead and change what heading this is. So let's just use heading four on that. You can go ahead and make it bold, italic, underlined, and so on. You can also go ahead and change the text color or highlight it or even link any page of your website to it. So you can go ahead and link to any pages of your website or external websites to this. Now we won't be spending so much time on this, but I'm sure you get the gist of what you can achieve with this rich content. Now that we're done with all of this, I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And as you can see, it's been added and the price for this, we're just going to leave at, at $45. All right. So now we have our very first item and the only item we have on this collection. And now you know how to add content to your collection. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in more content, but I'm going to skip through that in the video so that you don't have to sit down and watch through that. So I'll see you in a minute. All right. So I have added the items that I needed to add. And these are the items as you can see, we have six items and these items have the titles, the product images, their product descriptions, galleries and prizes as well. Now, the thing that I wanted to share with you before we move on to the next part of this tutorial is sorting and filtering this collection. Now over here, we can go ahead and sort this collection. So go ahead and click on add a sort and here you can choose to sort any field on this collection. Now we can sort the title and we can sort it from A to Z, which is alphabetically. So let's go ahead and add add sort. Now that is going to sort it from the first letter to the last letter in the alphabet in that format. Now you can also go ahead and edit that and change 
what that says and you say you want it to be from z to a and you're going to choose from w all the way to e and as well what you can do here is you can save this view you can save this uh sorting and you can click on new view and here we're going to say a uh, title from a a to z and you can just hit on enter and that is going to save that view for you and what this view does is that it's going to let you leave this sort here so that you can always come back to it at any time and here you can go ahead and delete that sort and it's still going to be applied to the other view and here we have a view where the last item we added is at the top and the first item we added is at the last part of the list and here we have another view where it's titled a to z and the next thing we're going to check out is the filter how we're going to filter through this particular collection but what we're going to do is to add one more field and the field is going to be a special field called the tags and what this field does is to allow us to check if this is a male fashion or a female fashion let's go ahead and choose the field type and call this category and once you're done go ahead and click on save and here we're going to click on the very first option as you can see this is a beanie and we're going to say that this is going to be a men category now go ahead and click on create men and this is going to save that tag and over here you can see that we can also manage the tags so we manage the tags it shows you the tags that you have for that particular item and you can also go ahead and rename that tag or delete the tag so let's close this right here and head over to the next section which is a floral summer dress and this is a women tag so let's go ahead and call this women and since we don't have any tag called women yet we're going to go ahead and create a new tag called women as you can see we also have the men tag showing up here because we've created that before and here we're going to go ahead and select the one for the female this is a female gene so let's go ahead and select the women tag because that is what we have created earlier so that is been saved and this is also a women fashion let's select that for women and here we have a sneaker so we can also say this is a men category and also the jacket we can say that this is a men jacket so as you can see we have the option to actually manage the tags and we can rename the tags or delete the tags and if you have duplicates of you know men maybe if the men doesn't have an uppercase m and you want to match them you can go ahead and match them so let's just do that and see if it works so let's just add another tag called men and we have two cases of men here and if we go over to the manage you can go ahead and merge this so let's click on merge and we're going to merge this together men and men with different letters capitalization so click on merge and you can also see that it asks you what you want to merge it as the title that you want to use and when you click on that it saves and merges the same all right so that is how we add the tags and what we're going to do here is to now head over to the filter and we're going to create a new filter and here we're going to filter the category field so let's scroll all the way down to category and over right here we're going to say that the condition we want is contains what and here we're going to see the value that we want so we have the men value and over here you can just choose the men and add filter and when you do that it's going to filter through all the categories that contain the tag men all right and we're going to go ahead and save that view and call that men and hit on enter and that saves that category and we're also going to do another thing here we're going to head back to the default view and head over to the filter and click on edit and over here we're going to change this from men to women we're going to click on update and then we're going to go ahead and save as well and call this women and click on save and now we have different categories with different sortings and different views based on what we want and over here we have a sort from the uh, for the title sorted from a to z as you can see from e to w and he here we have the one filtered for the men view which is for categories of all men and here we have the categories for all women and that is not the only thing that you can do you can also choose the kind of layout that you want and this layout is a list layout and you can go ahead and save these and call this list and click on save and here we have a new list or we have a new view which is a list type and here we're going to go ahead and change this back to a table and here we have a view with a list and we can also go ahead and choose another view with the gallery so let's go ahead and choose the gallery as you can see shows up the gallery based off of the filter that we have and also we're going to go ahead and delete this filter so it shows all the items in the gallery view and so we're going to go ahead and create a new view and call this gallery view all right so this is now showing us all the gallery view and for the women we can go ahead and leave this as it is and here we're going to go ahead and rename this and just call it men and here we have the title sorted from a to z and here 
we have the default view so this is how you can actually maximize what your collection does and the views that you want it to be and the filters that you want to save you don't want to always come back to it you know and so many more so you can do this for any of the fields you can sort them and save the view for a later time now we are done with the collection back end we're about to start displaying content in the front end I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that and if you're excited to join me on that section don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please consider subscribing because we're going to have an amazing time together in this tutorial and just before we get to that section over here you can see we have an, a button that says mirror on site and we're going to test that out once we have added a section to display this content on our front end so let's jump right to our front end all right so we are done adding content to our collection and here we're about to start displaying the items or content in our front end for our site users to see now since we created this fashion and here we've been working with this collection let's go ahead and click on this option and add dynamic page now a dynamic page is a page that allows you to work with the content from your collection all right and here we have different types of things you can do with it the first option is to display content and here we have the list page all right so this is where we display the items in a list or in a card like this and then we have the item page which is to display each particular item in their separate pages based on their url and here when you click on learn more or see more here it takes you to this page and so on and then we also have a blank page this is where you choose what you want it to do and you can do this if you have different you know plans for your pages and how you want it to look like and then we have another one which is a new option and it's called manage item page and this is what allows you to actually allow your site visitors or anyone that you give permission to edit the contents of your collection so this page is automatically generated and it takes in all the fields that you have and then it creates a form for you and allows you to edit each of the contents save them and send them back to your collection all right so the very first thing i want to add is the list page let's click on list and add to site and when you add that page to sites it's going to create it automatically for you and it's going to link them automatically for you all right so as you can see from here we have the pages so under the pages we have the fashion pages which is a dynamic page and we have the list page all right so this list page is this is a repeater and if you click on it you can see that this is a repeater and if you want to add a repeater to your website head over to this plus sign or this add element here and head over to the layout tools and head over to the repeaters and you can choose the repeater that you want and you can begin to add content to your repeater such as the image the text you know and also we have the button element now you can click on this to add any element that you want so you can go to the quick ads and over here you can add a title and here you can also add the image or you can add a paragraph to your repeater so you can drag and drop this into your repeater and it will attach that all right so this is how it's going to look like we're going to go ahead and delete this and we want to only display the image the title and the price and this button element is going to say something like learn more or you can also go ahead and change that and say buy now all right i think that makes more sense and before we actually jump right into the next one we're going to click on this repeater here and we're going to click on this connection icon so this is what you actually use to connect your front-end layout to what is in your back end on your collection so when you click on this we're going to head over to this section all right so this is what we call a data set and a data set is simply a link between your elements and your collection so it pulls in content from your collection and then it links it to these elements in your front end and displays the elements. And we're going to take a look at that right now. Now over here, we can see that we've connected a couple of fields and these are the fields that we have in our collection that can naturally be displayed. Now this here is the image. When you click on that, you can see that we have an image source and the image source is going to be the product image, which is the field that we created earlier in our collection. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Then the alt text is the alternative text. And here you're going to go ahead and click on the title to make that your alt text and the tooltip is when you hover on it and it shows you a title or a text over your hover and that is what the tooltip is so go ahead and click on your title or any field that you think is best for your tooltip and for the link we're going to go ahead and choose this later on and we're going to be choosing the item field when we have added a dynamic page that shows individual elements now just before we get to that section let's go ahead and choose here the data set settings now this is where you rename your data set this is where you choose what a data set should be is it a read and write so if you have something like this where you are simply displaying content it just needs to be a read mode but if you have a form then you're going to go ahead and make that a write and over here you can also choose the number of items to display all at once so right now we have over here six elements 
and here you can choose to display only three elements at a time now we click on three is going to display only three elements to you at a time now this is what allows you to add elements such as pagination bars or button elements that allows you to page through your repeater and go on see on the next element but currently it's not possible to have a pagination bar on your website and a pagination bar is pretty an intuitive element that needs to work and so here we have the pagination request for Wix Studio and you can head over to this section and vote for this feature to be added to Wix Studio. Nonetheless, there is a simple fix for this and that is using a button element to load more items on your repeater. And so to add that button element, we need to go ahead and click on this section and then we're going to go over here and add a cell. Now what the cell is going to do is we're going to add a cell to the bottom and here is where we're going to place in our button element. So now go ahead and add elements and head over to the button and then drag this to the cell that you just created. Now you can make sure that this is properly aligned by going over to design then go ahead and center this horizontally and also go ahead and center this vertically now this is aligned properly i'm going to change the text and say load more and here we're going to go ahead and click on this connect to cms and the action here is going to be load more so go ahead and click on load more now there are different options but we need to load more so it loads more items from our data sets but most importantly make sure that you're connecting it to the same data sets that is connected to your repeater which is this repeater here so if you have different data sets on this page you're going to make sure to locate that particular data set that is connected to your repeater now once you're done we can go ahead and preview this to take a look at how it looks like now this is how it looks like from our site visitors page now when we click on load more it's going to go ahead and load all the items that we have and it's going to disable when there are no longer items to load. So that is how you can actually add a pagination to your repeater. Now we're going to move on to the next important thing and which is the URL. Now let's go ahead and click on pages and over here click on this icon and head over to the settings. Now as you can see from these settings, we have a very, very simple display which is called fashion. And we're going to go ahead and actually publish this and view how this looks like on the front page. But before we do that, I'm going to head over to the horizontal menu and I'm going to go ahead and click on manage menu. And here I'm going to bring this to this section and go ahead and add an item. And I'm going to add a dynamic and our pages. Now this is going to bring me to a page or a section where I actually need to select the page that I want to add to my menu. And as you can see, this is the fashion list or which is this page that I want to add. So go ahead and select that and make sure that this page is selected and click on done. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it as fashion list and click on enter to save it to your page. As you can see, this is the current page. And let's go ahead and publish this and view it in a live page. All right. So this is the home page. There's nothing really on this page, but this is the page that we've added, which is the fashion list. When you click on that, it's going to bring you to the dynamic page, which is the fashion dynamic page that we've created so it's more like any other page on your website but it's still regarded as a dynamic page so next we're going to add a page that is quite different from this and that is the item page so go ahead and click on the pages and then go ahead and click on this section here for the pages for the fashion pages dynamic page and click on that and then say add dynamic page now we're going to go ahead and add the item page now go ahead and add these two sites now as you can see we have an error here and so you're going to go ahead and choose then that collection that you want to create a dynamic page for. For me, it's the fashion and I'm going to go ahead and add to site. Now, once you add that to site, it's going to create you a dynamic item page for each of the items that we have in our collection. Now, as you can see, we have the title already connected, the text already connected, the image already connected and many more. And most importantly, you can also go back and forth through the items that you want to display. And here we see that we have a preset page by Wix, but this page is completely editable. You can go ahead and edit this page as much as you want, anyhow you want to design to match your brand. And that is completely doable and you can add as many things as possible. For example, I added a gallery and the gallery is not showing here. So what I want to do is to add a section or a cell where I'm going to be adding the gallery to. So I'm going to go ahead and go to add. I'm going to head all the way down to the gallery section at the quick ads. Now add this to your page and this is going to add the Wix Pro gallery to your page. Now once that has been added, you can go ahead and customize this gallery, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this connect to CMS and it's going to open up a data set for me. Now there is one data set on this page and that is a dynamic page data set. Now, which is a fashion here, fashion item, click on that. I'm going to connect this particular gallery to our products gallery. Once you do that, you can see that all the galleries for this particular item is now displayed in this gallery. Now you can play around with this to see how it looks like, but most importantly, you can also preview different 
items that you have in your collection so i have six items in my collection and so i'm able to actually change them and see how they look like from the now if you're happy with how this looks like let's head back to the list page which is right over here the fashion list page and what i want to do is i want to connect the link to this image so click on this connected to cms and over here in the link connect to so when they click on this link or they click on this image it should link them to the item page and you can choose how it opens either in a new window or in the current window so i'm going to leave it in the current window and also this buy now button needs to connect as well to the item page or the dynamic item page so again the link or the click action is that it goes to a dynamic page which is the fashion item page now go ahead and publish this and let's take a look at how this looks like in our front end all right so i've just connected my items and i'm here in the live page and when i hover on this you can see that there is a link and when i click on this it's going to bring me to a new page where there is a slug for fashion dash one and then the wound needs being which is the title of this particular item generated by Wix. Now you can see we have the title, we have the price, we have the image and we have the gallery that was added as well. Now you can also click on this to take you to the previous item. As you can see that takes you to the previous item and it also takes you to another item which was the very first item we added and this is the image, this is the gallery. As you can see these pages are exactly the same design but with different content and that is what a dynamic page does. Now one important thing I want to explain here is that we're going to go back to the item page and click on this icon and go to the settings and here we have a setting where we can determine how the url looks as you can see we have fashion dash one and then we have vintage leather jackets which is the title now this url is completely customizable and so what you're going to go ahead and do is to click on that and delete it but if you're happy with what Wix has added for you you do not need to change this at all so what you can do here i'm just going to go ahead and change that and said so you can change this log to say products and then you can go ahead and add over here the title now if you leave this as a product just saying product it's going to change to a list dynamic page so it's going to display all items now remember i mentioned earlier that the url is what controls how or what displays on the page so this is going to be a first example we're going to have a look at and the other one we're going to check that out pretty soon so go ahead and add a field so we can customize it for this particular item over here and the thing that makes each of these items unique for me is the title each of the titles are unique and they are different so I'm going to go ahead and add the product and then title. So it's unique and it's different. And you can also go ahead and add as many things as you want. You can add also the, the ID or the price and as many, if you have more fields, you can add that just to customize how it looks like. For me, I'm going to leave it as products and title. Then I'm going to go ahead and publish and then let's view this on your live site. All right. So we are here on our dynamic list page and here we're about to click on the very first item let's click on this flora print summer dress and when you click on that you can see that url has changed from products from, from fashion to products and then this shows the title as well so this is how you customize that now let's take a look at another example of how the url actually affects what is displayed on that page and this is the page i want to use for the example and here i'm going to go ahead and click on this icon and then go to duplicate layouts so i'm going to use a different version of this page to actually share this example and what i want to do is that i want to change this by the category initially we had a category in a tag form which is a tag type and we're going to change that before we actually check out this example so here i'm going to call this fashion category now once you're happy with what we have here we're also going to change this text and just call this category and if you're happy with what this is we're going to head back to our cms to our collection and fashion all right so here we have a couple of updates and if you scroll all the way to the right you can see that we have a new field which is a system field that is called a fashion list and we also have another one for the fashion item and we have another one for the fashion category which we just created now over here we have the fashion list which is this page right over here this is the list page which is a dynamic page and here we have the fashion item page which is this page the dynamic page or the dynamic item page and as you can see from here wix automatically generates those urls based on our settings that we did earlier as you can see it's products who need bini so what i need to do here is i need to change this field from a tag field to a title field 
but I don't want to do it directly from there. What I want to do is to add a new field that is a text field. I'm going to go ahead and choose this. I'm going to call this category to display and then click on save. And what I want to do is to bring this field right over here and I'm going to change this to men and I'm going to copy that and paste it everywhere else where men appears. And I'm going to also write for women and paste that where women also appear. So what I want to do is that I want to create a page for all items that contain only men items and all content that contains only women items. So this is going to filter the repeater when the page loads. So let's head back to our page and over here, we're going to close this. We're going to head back to this page, which is the page we just created. Now go ahead and click on this icon, go back to settings. Now over here is the URL or the slug that we need to update. And what I want to do is I want to call this category and I want to also add something to it. I'm going to add a field and the field that I want to add Add is the category to display now this has now become a new dynamic page that shows either items for men or women now remember that we have only two categories men or women which I've added just added recently it has now become a dynamic item page that shows or filters the data set on this page based on the URL so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and click on this particular menu again go to manage menu and I'm going to add the individual items that are being filtered. Now let's go ahead and add an item, go to dynamic and app pages. And here we have the dynamic fashion item page. And the page we're interested in is this particular one, which is this. If you see this, that means it's the page that you're on. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, it shows me which item because I've already set the URL to display the category to display. And so the category, the first category is the men. Go ahead and click on done. And I'm going to say men and click on save. And I'm going to do the same thing for the women. Go to dynamic and app pages. And I'm also going to go ahead and click on this particular app page, which is this and choose women and then done. And then rename this to say women. So what this does is that it filters the data set on this page based on the URL. And you're going to see how the structure of the URL actually shows up. So what we're going to do is we're going to refresh the page. And over here, you can see that we have more options in our menu. We have the first one, which is men. And as you can see, it shows the category men. So all items that were tagged men in our collection are now being displayed here. So you can also choose to, you know, visit a page where you have another category for women and all items that are only women will show up here. So that is how you use dynamic pages to filter items based on URL. Now we're going to check out another type of dynamic page. So we're going to go over to the pages again, and we're going to click on this icon and go to add category or add dynamic page. All right. So what I want to do is I want to rename this page. I want to call this the category page or the category page. All right, so this is now called the fashion category so that I can be able to see it anytime I know what page I'm working with. And then next, I'm going to go ahead and click on this icon and add a dynamic page. I'm going to choose the fashion collection. And over here, we're going to check out this particular item page, which is the manage item page. As you can see, this is a new feature. And what it does is it gives site members access to manage and edit content from existing collections directly from this page. Access can be limited to site collaborators. So create page. So if you want to add a page specifically for your site users to edit content at any time, then you can also go ahead and do that here. Now, this is how the page looks like. It's simply a form page and it allows the site users to select the item from the collection. And then it also allows item to select, you know, to change the text or to change the image, to upload a new image, to also change the price, the category to display and a few more like that. So if you want them to also choose like, you know, to update the gallery page, you can also add an upload element so they can upload or update that field. And here you can see that there is a button here that is used to delete the item. And when you click on that and click on this connected to CMS, you can see that the action says delete. There are so many options here and that is what is being used in this particular page to allow the site users to manage the item for the collection. Now the undo as well, when you click on that, you can see that the action or the click action is revert. And on over here, when you see the save, the click action says save. And here, when you click on the eye icon, as you can see, it goes to the dynamic page, which is the fashion item page. And then next, we also have the next icon. So this icon is connected to the next dynamic page, or the next content or item page. And the previous is connected to the previous dynamic page. 
now this page is not necessary if you don't want to give access to your site users maybe you just want to have it for yourself you know and use it for yourself to you know to update content and you don't want to go to the collection at all times then this is the page that you're going to use for that but here we're going to go to the very final part of this tutorial and that is adding a filter to your dynamic list page so if you want your site users to be able to filter through items then we're going to check out this section now if you're enjoying this tutorial so far don't forget to smash that subscribe button give this video a like and also leave a comment about the feature that you're wanting to see in this tutorial now you can also check out my other tutorials on how to search and filter your wix collection i have so many tutorials out there that you can check out that you can use to add custom filter and search to your collection most of them you need to write the code so you can feel free to check them out now we had this example when we visited this page this is my website and over here you can see that i was able to add a function that allows site users to search for items or search for tutorials on this page and by the way you can check out this template on my website you can head over to the template and can check out premium Wix studio templates all right so back to this particular page and section you can see that i've added a search bar that allows me to search for any item that matches my keyword and over here we have the filter as well that you can use to filter through and you can clear the filter now you can also go ahead and search for anything like a data set and it's going to search every item that contains the word data set in the titles and also in the description so as you can see basically two items were found containing that keyword data set so that's what we're going to do but unfortunately we're not able to do this for the search bar because wix doesn't allow us to use text input element to search items from our database however we can do this or achieve this using drop downs so what we're going to do is to add a new cell and then over here is where we're going to add our drop down so head over to this add element and you're going to scroll all the way down to your input and over the selections you're going to click on the drop downs now here we have different options for our drop down i'm going to choose the very first option and drag it into, into my cell now i'm not going to be going much into the design of this, the functionality but what i wanted to do first of all is to click on connect to cms and over here you're going to choose what you want this drop down to do the first option is to filter content and the next one is to collect content but what i'm interested in is to filter content so click on this filter content go ahead and choose a data set now there is only one data set on this page and that is called fashion and that data set is connected to my repeater so this is very very important make sure that that data set you're connecting to your drop down is connected to your repeater and the next thing you want to do is to select the field that you want to filter for me i'm going to select the title field if you have any other field you can go ahead and choose the field but I'm going to go ahead and right click and then go over to duplicate to duplicate this element. I'm going to bring it next to my element. And over here, what I'm going to do is to connect it again to a different field. And that is the category to display. Now you can also go ahead and select the category itself because it's a tag, but it's still going to work. Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and publish and view these on the live site. All right. So we have two elements that we can use to filter through our repeater. And over here is the title and we have six items in our title. So if you go ahead and click on this floral print summer dress, you can see it filters that item. And you can also go ahead and choose a different item. It also chooses that item. And when you click on all, it brings back everything. You can also go ahead and filter by category. When you filter by men, you can see that it filters all items belonging to men. And if you filter by women, it also displays all items belonging to women. So that is how you add a filter to your Wix Studio website. So now we have talked about how to add content to our collection. We've talked about how to display content on our website. And we talked about how to filter content that's already on our website. Now the next thing we want to do here is how to allow your site users or site visitors to add content to your website. And so we're going to go over to the pages we're going to create a new page and here we're going to add a new page not a dynamic page and this page is going to be called forms and this forms is going to contain few elements that are going to use to insert content to our collection so head over to the add element and we're going to head all the way to the input and over the input we're going to head all the way to the user input and we're going to add a text input element that's going to allow the site visitors to add content to the website now this one is going to be for the title so let's go ahead and go to the settings and here we're going to say title i'm going to scroll to where it says show the initial text i'm going to change this placeholder to say type here and we're going to make this a required field they need to select this before they can submit this item and next we're going to head over to the input again 
and head over to the drop downs and add a drop down now this is just going to be a very very simple tutorial a very simple section but this is just going to demonstrate how to add items to your collection for your site users now here is going to be it for the category so i'm going to change this to the category and over here at the placeholder or the text to show we're going to say select the category and most importantly we're going to go ahead and say auto complete so this when you begin to type it begins to suggest options for you and this is also going to be a required field so they need to actually select this before it will work and then we're going to head over to the ad again and we're going to go over to the quick ad and go to the buttons and add a button here now this button we're going to use this button to submit this content to the collection so whatever the user types in here or selects here is going to be inserted in the collection when they click on this button so we're going to change this button to say submit and we're going to click on the very first option and here in this text element, we're going to click on this connect to CMS and over here we're going to create a new data set because there's no data set on this static page. So add a data set and over here we're going to choose a collection and the collection we are choosing from is the fashion collection and this is the name of the data set. You can rename this or you can leave it as it is. So go ahead and create a data set. Now over here you can see that there's a warning here and the warning is saying that this is a read only data set and we need to change it to a write data set. So go ahead and click on data set settings and over here we're going to change this mode from read to write not a read and write but just to a write and once we've done that come back to this text element and make sure that the value is connected to our title and also the category as well click on the connect to cms and we're using this to collect content and not to filter content so we're going to go ahead again and select the data set we just created which is the fashion data set and the value is connected to the category to display and then most importantly when you click on manage choices you can see that we have a couple of choices that are there by default these are which options and so we're going to go ahead and delete all of these options so let's go ahead and get rid of all of that and what we need to do to populate this option is to show connect options from a collection so go ahead and check this by default if you want to actually show options from your database or your collection then go ahead and use this option but if you have different options you can go ahead and add options from here and say add a choice and you can go over here and edit the label and say probably men and also go ahead and say add another one that says women now the next thing to do here is the submit button so go ahead and click on the submit button and connect to cms and over here choose data set which is the fashion data set and over here we're going to choose the action and the action is going to be submit now when you click on submit it's going to give you two options here which is the success message and the failure message we're going to add this click on this to add these options to your page and as you can see we have some text elements that are being added automatically and these elements are going to show up based on the validation of your form so if the form was submitted successfully then this text here which is your content has been submitted will show up now you can edit this text and you can also customize the text i'm not going to be going through that but you can feel free to do that as much as you want now let's head back to the submit button click on this connected to cms and here when successful or when the item has been submitted you either want to stay on the page or you want to navigate to a different page now that is entirely up to you and you can also choose the link that you want to go to so you can choose an external link or you can decide to stay on the same page or your website you can decide to scroll to an anchor you can decide to scroll to the top of your page or the bottom part of your page you can decide to open up a document or an email or a phone number or a light box so what i want to do is actually to stay on the page when it's succeeded now we have successfully added a form to our page i'm going to go ahead and align these items properly within my website all right so i've stacked these elements properly in my website so once you're done go ahead and publish i'm going to view this page on a live site now head over to the forms and head over to the seo basics you're going to rename your form and go to url now this is the page on the live site i'm about to start adding items to our collection now just before we do that let's head over to our cms go to our collections and open up the fashion collection now this is what our collection looks like with the title products image products gallery description price category and category to display but the only two things we are displaying currently are the title and the category to display so we're going to head over to our live site and here we're going to say the best unisex gene and here we're going to go ahead and click on women and click on submit now when you click on submit you're going to see an error that says an error called try again and the reason for this is because of the permissions we have on this collection now let's head over to the more actions head over to permissions and privacy and over here you can see that anyone can view content but only the admin can add content however i want anyone to be able to add content and that is why we have the error because I'm not an admin 
and I'm not logged into the site, so I'm not allowed to add content to this collection. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, once you save that, head back to your page and then refresh this page. Now, once you're back on this page, add in your title and head over to the women and then click on submit. Now, once you add that, you can see that it says your content has been submitted. Now, let's head back to our collection, which is this CMS right here and then click on fashion. And as you can see from here, we have the best unisex jean, which has been added and we have the category, which has been added. So if you want to add more of these options, such as the product image, the gallery, the description and more, then you're going to add more elements to your page. But now that we've added content to our page and we have a form that collects content. And the next thing we want to do is to allow site visitors to actually edit content that are already on our website. Then what we're going to do is to copy this stack. Go ahead and copy that. We're going to head back to our pages. We're going to head back to our dynamic page for the fashion pages. Now click on this to add a dynamic page. We're going to click on the blank page. Now we're going to also select the collection, which is the fashion collection and click on add to site. Now that we have this item selected, go ahead and paste in your stack. And the next thing we're going to do is to connect these elements to our collection. Now you can, as you can see, this is an item page. We're going to go ahead and click on connect to CMS. And over here, you can see that we have another error that says this is a read only and it needs to be a read and write since we're collecting content. Head back to your dataset settings and over here, change the dataset mode to read and write. Now, this is going to display the title of this particular item on this page on here after we've connected it. So let's get back to our text input and over here in the values, we're going to connect this field to our title field in our database. Now you can see that this is connected to the best unisex jean item, which is what is displayed here. So if I change this to elegant silk scarf, it should also change here. And this category over here, we can also choose to connect to CMS. And here we're going to collect content. The data set we're connecting to is the fashion data set. And the value is going to be connected to our category to display. Now, once you do that, you can see that it's connected to that particular category. And the options for this particular item is already here. But if you want to show items from the collection, you can go ahead and use this option. And next, we're going to also change this submit button and connect this to our data sets. And over here, we're going to click on action connects to and the action should connect to submit. And over here, we also have an error message. We're going to delete these items here and click on our submit button again and add a success message and a failure message. So anytime there is a failure message is going to show the failure message. And if there is a success message is going to show the success message. So that is what this is about. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add and head back to the list and I'm going to add a button element. So let's go ahead and click on this button element and duplicate that. So we head over to duplicate and we're going to say edit. And the next thing we want to do is to connect this to a page that we created, which is where the form is. And the form is right over here. And we're going to change this name and rename it and call this fashion form. Now, once you're done, head back to the list so that we're able to see the difference between the fashion item and this particular item. So head back to your button and click on this connect to data set. And over here, we're going to connect these or the click action is going to connect to our fashion form page. Now, once that is done, you can decide to open this page on a new tab or on the same tab. Now go ahead and publish and then let's view this on the live side. All right. Now we we'll go ahead and click on the edit button for this item. Let's choose this one here which is the floral print summer dress. You can see that that is what is being displayed right here. And the category is also women. Now you can change this to men and then click on submit. And here we have an arrow. And yes, this is expected. And we can head back to our collection again. And over here in your collection, head over to the fashion and click on this icon and head over to permissions and privacy. Now we have a permission for who can update the content. Only the admin can update the content and so you need to set this to anyone or site members or people who are logged in to edit the content. So once you're done, click on save and then publish your page and view this again on the live site. All right. So I have just published my site and I'm viewing this again, this page again to see how it works. Now I've changed the permissions to say anyone can update content. And so what I want to do here is to change this to men and click on submit. I can see that it says your content has been submitted. That means the floral print summer dress should now become men category. Now let's head over to our collection and over here, which is where we have this should change to men. All right. So this is how you update content. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this back to women because the category belongs to the women category. 
all right so this is how you add a cms to your wix website and i've showed you the basics of what you can do with your wix cms now we've talked about how to create a collection we talked about how you can manage your collection we talked about how you can display content from your collection we've talked about how you can collect content and add them to your collection and we're going to check out one final thing before we end this video we're going to head over to the cms and this is the part where you add a general settings to your cms so we're going to head over to the more actions and here you can create different folders for different collections so for example you want to create a folder for the fashion so you're going to call this store and you can give it any color that you want to give it and you can also add a description for example this folder contains store collections and you can go ahead and create this folder now as you can see we have zero collections and this is the folder that helps you to organize your collections now let's head over here and click on this icon and we're going to move this to a folder and move it to the store folder now you can move this here as you can see we have one collection in here now this helps you to organize your collections if you have so many collections and you want to be able to keep track of them properly now another thing that you can also do here is to click on the more actions and the backups now wix automatically backs up your collections but what you can do is to add manual backups at any time that you want to save your items and you can always restore to any of the backups based on the time and date. More options here are the advanced settings. Now over here, you can choose to display Wix app collections, such as the store collections, events, bookings, and many more. So you can also go ahead and toggle this on. And then we have another thing called a sandbox. So a sandbox is as a test environment for your collection. If you want to display items on a sandbox, it helps you to view them on your editor only. And you can decide to sync them to a live site. Now we can turn this on and then we can see how this changes our collections. So let's head back to our CMS and open up our fashion CMS. And over here you can see that we have a sandbox collection and we have a live collection. Now this is what the site visitors will see and this is what you only will see. So you can add items here and then you can view them on your editor. So what you can also do here is that you can synchronize items. You can go ahead and click on sync content and you want to sync all items from live to sandbox. So that you can send all these items from here and send them to the sandbox now since we don't have any items on our sandbox we're not able to sync items from our sandbox to our live collection and over here you can see that we have a way for you to select only certain items and send them to your sandbox and here you can see that you can erase items in sandbox and replace with live so if you have items on your sandbox you can send them to your live collection and then delete them from your sandbox so let's just go ahead and sync all items from live to sandbox when you click on sync it sends everything that you have on your live to your sandbox so you click on sandbox now you have all the items here now after seven days these items will be deleted now over here you can see we have folders we have our collections and we also have wix app collections now this is a part that contains all the wix apps now if you have any wix app for example the wix store it's also going to display here or wix events wix bookings and many more and over here since we have a members area a way for us to log into our website we have a section for badges or private data for members who are logged into the site so this brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to add cms to your wix studio website i hope this tutorial was very useful to you if it was please don't forget to smash that subscribe button and give this video a like thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial